Hi everybody and welcome to Love Fraud Live. When you're romantically involved with a narcissist, after a while you may feel like you just cannot make your partner happy. It seems like they keep changing what they want. Well, you're right. I'm Donna Anderson, author of lovefraud.com, and tonight I'll give you 20 answers to the question, what do narcissists want? At the end of my presentation, I'll answer your questions. To join the chat or ask a question, please subscribe to this channel. Narcissists are charming and attentive at first, but eventually they turn cold and demanding. If you are or were romantically involved with a narcissist, the change probably made your head spin. The term narcissist gets thrown around a lot these days. Technically, a narcissist is someone who could be diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. According to the American Psychiatric Association, they have a grandiose sense of self-importance, believe they are special and unique, need excessive admiration, and have a sense of entitlement. They do not have empathy. Someone like this doesn't really want the give and take of a mutually caring and supportive relationship. So what do they want? Well, following are 12 variations of the question with the answers. Here's number one. What do narcissists want? Narcissists want what is called narcissistic supply. Tiffany Ketterman, a licensed professional counselor, presented a webinar for love fraud called Understanding and Recognizing Narcissistic Abuse. In the webinar, she explains that narcissistic supply is anything or anyone that feeds the narcissistic person's ego and keeps the person artificially pumped up, protecting their fragile view of themselves. This could include fame, admiration, compliments, good looks, a prestigious career, or the image of a perfect family. Here's number two. What do narcissists want to hear? Well, anything that feeds their ego or makes them look good, like compliments, flattery, and praise. If you have a problem with their behavior for any reason, they definitely are not interested in hearing about that. Here's number three. What do narcissists want sexually? Physical stimulation and praise for their performance, whether or not they deserve it. If they seem to want to please you, it's only so you can praise them. They are not truly concerned about your feelings or your enjoyment depending on their level of antisocial and psychopathic traits, because there is a lot of overlap in these disorders, narcissists may also want to sexually control you. Here's number four. What do narcissists want in a partner? They want a partner who makes them look good, preferably somebody beautiful and successful. They want someone who has assets that they can exploit. They may also want someone who is compliant, who does what they want and feeds their ego. Here's number five. What do narcissists want in a relationship? Well, they want a partner who is useful in some way. They may be looking for sex, services, money, connections, a place to live, entertainment, or someone to complete the image that they want to portray. They are not looking for companionship or someone to grow old with, except when they want you to take care of them when they're old. Here's number six. 
What don't narcissists want you to know? Well, they don't want you to know that they are users, that they cannot love, that all their promises are lies designed to hook you, and that once you are no longer useful to them, the promises will be broken and you will be discarded. Here's number seven. Why do narcissists want to be friends with their ex? Again, because they are users. If they were able to use the ex in the past, they assume they'll be able to use him or her in the future. So they stay in touch. If you throw them out, it's easier to hook up with an old flame than it is to find a new one. Here's number eight. Why do narcissists want to control you? When they control you, they can exploit you. Also, many narcissists consider you to be their property, and they believe that they have the right to do what they want with their property. That's why they get so angry when you leave. They feel like they are losing control of their property. Here's number nine. Why do narcissists want to hurt you? Well, it's another example of their outrageous sense of entitlement. When you catch on to their lies and stand up to them, this causes a classic narcissistic injury and affront to their ego. They react with narcissistic rage, which means that according to them, you deserved to be punished. Here's number 10. Why do narcissists want you back? Well, probably because whomever they left you for has thrown them out, or because they want their property back. No matter how much they tell you that they're sorry, they screwed up, they've been to church or to therapy, don't think they've actually had a change of heart. If you let them back into your life, they will soon be treating you worse than ever. Here's number 11. Do narcissists want what they can't have? Well, they want what they want. They can't conceive of the idea that they can't have what they want. And here's number 12. Do narcissists want what you have? Well, yeah, that's usually why they target you in the first place because you have something that they want. Here's number 13. Do narcissists want to be loved? Well, narcissists do not have the ability to love like normal people do. They can be attracted to someone. They certainly want sex, but they cannot truly care about someone else's well-being, which is a critical component of real love. So, Although they may say they want love, what they really want is, you get it, narcissistic supply. Here's number 14. Do narcissists want to be alone? Well, no, because they're exploiters. And if they are alone, there's nobody to exploit. They may say they want to be alone when the truth is that they want to continue using you without putting any effort into the relationship. Here's number 15. Do narcissists want a divorce? Now with that one, it depends. If you are no longer useful or they found a juicier target, then yes, they may want a divorce. But if they're not finished with you or if they want to continue controlling you, then they will not want a divorce. Here's number 16. Do narcissists want sympathy? Well, sympathy is a form of narcissistic supply. So yeah, narcissists do want sympathy. But by telling you a sad story, they may be engaging in the pity play, which is a calculated attempt to gain your sympathy. They know that if you feel sorry for them, it will be easier to convince you to give them what they want. Here's number 17. Do narcissists want revenge? If their plans are thwarted and they've suffered a narcissistic injury, 
then yes, they may want revenge. From a narcissist's point of view, anyone with the audacity to deny them what they want deserves to be punished. Here's number 18. Do narcissists want friends? Well, they want people they can exploit. Friends can be exploited. Therefore, friends are useful. But they are not looking for companionship or camaraderie. Here's number 19. Do narcissists want to be liked? Well, they may want to be liked, but only because they know that if their targets like them, then they can get what they want. Mostly, narcissists want to be admired or feared. And finally, here's number 20. Do narcissists want to change? The answer is no, emphatically no. They are quite content with themselves. In fact, they consider themselves to be superior to the rest of us. That's the essence of narcissism. So if you've escaped a narcissist and suddenly this person promises to change, don't believe it. It's a ploy to reel you in again. And once you're hooked, the narcissist will revert to all those old nasty behaviors. So those are the 20 questions about what narcissists want and the answers. Now what? If you believe that you're romantically involved with a narcissist, it's important to understand what that means. When someone has a personality disorder, their beliefs and behaviors are thoroughly ingrained into who they are. It's not that they were once kind and loving and then something happened to make them entitled and mean. They were always entitled and mean. No drugs or therapy have been proven to give narcissists empathy or enable them to love fully. Therefore, they are not and never will be satisfying relationship material. So don't wait for a diagnosis. If you're unhappy and you suspect that your partner may be disordered, the best thing you can do is leave. That's the presentation for tonight. Next, I'll answer your questions. So if you want in-depth advice about your own personal situation, I do offer consultations and a deep emotional release service. There's a link in the description below this video. Okay, well, looks like we got lots of comments here today. Okay, so Sandra has a question. Why do they seem to resort to sleeping separately once they think they've hooked you? That is another method of control. Um, some people, some narcissists and sociopaths essentially withhold sex um, in order to sink their claws further into you. Now, that often doesn't mean they're not getting any sex. I mean, 10 to 1, they're cheating and uh, getting um, sex in, in other, with other people in other places. Um, but if they're doing that to you, it, it's just a method of establishing control. That, that's, that's pretty much what that is. Okay. Local media says... I want all those things, just like a narcissist, but the difference might be whether I do anything about getting those things. Praise good-looking spouses, etc. Yes, this is true. Um, the thing to keep in mind, though, is that for a narcissist, it's a one-way street. I mean, yeah, I mean, who doesn't want to be praised? Who doesn't want a, a good-looking partner? Um, who doesn't want success, but for them, it's all about what they want and they don't care about what you want. And, you know, there, there is no give and take, you know, that's, that's the fundamental, um, idea to understand about any type of 
relationship and not even just romantic relationships i mean any relationship you know if you're dealing with a narcissistic mother or a family member you know it, it's all about it's all about them it's always all about them and they have no interest in um looking at things from your point of view or considering what you may need uh the rest of us simply don't matter so so that's essentially what the difference is with these people and Sandra makes a good point here in answer to the same question she says we all desire things but healthy people don't manipulate to obtain those things okay so Kay Clock says how do I explain psychological abuse to my divorce lawyer um, we actually have a, a, a good article about that that talks about what to say to your divorce lawyer. It's on love fraud. The, uh, here's an important thing. When you're dealing with divorce and an attorney, keep in mind that the attorney is not your therapist. Okay. Um, you may, you may not need to try to explain the psychological abuse to your attorney, um, at least in the part of how it made you feel, you know, un unless you're seeking damages because of that. So, I mean, that this is just a really important thing. Just always keep in mind that your attorney is dealing with the law and dealing with, um, you know, what is what they call actionable. You know, what is something that um, they can say in a court case and what is something that essentially they can get money from or get property from or establish some rules, you know, put in your divorce decree or something along those lines. So um, you be careful about how you want to engage in any of the em emotions of your situation with the attorney. Now, y you may need to um, explain a certain level of psychological abuse um, but just, just think very carefully about that because, you know, what happens is that if you spend a lot of time talking about something the attorney can't address, first of all, you're wasting a lot of money, you know, cause the attorney's charging you hundreds of dollars an hour and, um, they, they can't necessarily do anything about that. So y you just have to really be careful about, you know, what, you're trying to explain to the attorney and whether or not it is something that they need to it, that they need to work into your legal documents or your case. Uh, in, in some cases it is, but I, I'm just suggesting to, you know, remember that for explaining psychological abuse uh, or understanding it, you know, that's something a therapist can help you with. Um, so it's, it's only, I would only suggest, explain to the attorney what they need to understand in order to incorporate it into your case. Okay. So Sandra says they have three channels, charm, pity, and rage, and cycle through to see which one they can hook you with again. Well, that's a pretty good observation. Charm, pity, and rage. There's a few others I can think of. Um, my ex-husband convinced me that we were working on um, building our future together. So another thing, another thing that you might want to add to those three items is that they prey on your dreams sociopaths often figure out what your dreams are and then use that to trap you. They, they promise to make your dreams come true and this makes it very difficult to leave a sociopath because not only are you leaving the relationship, you're also walking away from your dreams and, and that, that can be really, really hard. 
And it's, it's really insidious, you know, the way they, they, you know, figure out what your dreams are and then promise to make them come true. It, it's, it's just awful. So I would add that to um, some of the, the channels that they use. Oh, okay. So Sandra uh, likes the answer, sleeping separately for power. Yeah. Um, I remember one case, because um, I've got ten or 12,000 cases. You know, people have told me what they've been through. And this one woman married this guy, and they didn't have sex for 17 years. And she thought, you know, he had problems, um, whatever. Well, the entire time he was sleeping with other people and he just did this to her as a method of maintaining control over her. So that's just one of the strategies that some of them use. All right. CC is, is me. Uh, how you doing? Haven't seen you in a while. So the question is, do all narcs spouses cheat and why? I would say most of them probably cheat. I, I have heard people cl uh, claim that um, they were with some someone who was disordered that didn't cheat. I suppose it's possible, but I would say lots and lots and lots of them do cheat. Um, a big reason is because they get bored. I mean, literally, they just get bored. And that's one of the traits, especially of antisocial personality disorder and psychopathy, and quite frankly, I think a lot of people who say they're involved with a narcissist probably are involved with either an antisocial or a psychopath, but that just sounds too scary, so they don't want to say it. But anyway, a, a big issue is boredom. Um, essentially, they are always looking for stimulation, uh, including sexual stimulation, and um, that could be a new partner. It could be a new type of experience. Um, I mean, they're just always looking for something new because they get bored because they have this need for stimulation. So I would say that that's, that's really a big reason, you know, why they're always cheating. And, and the other thing is, of course, they're opportunists. And, um, if, if a situation presents itself or they think they can get away with it, um, then they're going to do it. And that, that's another thing. I mean, they do it, just for the thrill of getting away with it. So um, there's a lot of reasons why, but I would say those are probably the most prominent. Okay. Well, that appears to be the questions that we have for tonight. So thank you, everybody. Well, one more. Let's see. Define cheat, Sandra says. Last boyfriend was still living with his girlfriend for the first three months of our exclusive relationship and didn't think it was important to tell me, even though she was on her way out. Well, yep, that I'd say that qualifies as cheating. So um, it, it's just amazing. It's, it's, it's just amazing, you know. And, and, and that's the thing about narcissists is that, you know, they believe that they are entitled to get what they want. And if they want to sleep with the old girlfriend or live with the old girlfriend while pursuing the new girlfriend, well, that's what they want. And they don't see anything wrong with that. Which is why when you realize you're involved with somebody like this, the only thing you can do is get rid of them. Okay. Well, thank you so much, everybody. And we'll see you next week for the next episode of Love Fraud Live. Good night.